and to you all. It is rather dark today and gloomy outside, but we've got some lovely things to cheer us up and keep us occupied if we're having a day in of making. So drop me a comment, where are you watching from? What is the weather like where you are? And also, have you had a nice weekend? What have you been up to? What have you been making? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to make the Dawn caged bead necklaces. So like this. So I'm gonna be showing you how to make these little coiled beads, which, I mean, you can buy these cages, but why, why would you need to buy them when you can make them yourself? Um, I think they're really lovely, just a way of kind of prettying up an already very pretty bead. And you can use them in bracelets, you can use them in earrings, you can do whatever you fancy with them. But in your kits today, you're going to have enough to make a very lovely necklace. We've got uh, two sizes of pearls, some lovely crystals and some wire as well. So I'm using a 0.8 millimetre wire. Um, and we've got three different colours in your kits today to choose from. So before I take you over to the website and show you those kits, I'm just going to say a quick hello and good morning to you. So we've got Rachel in, she's in a dull and wet barrow. I've got Teresa watching, Edward's in as well. Good morning to you, Edward. Hello to Jan, she says good morning, Natalie, and everybody from a sunny Sudbury. So the sun is out somewhere. It's definitely not here it is miserable gray and trying to rain uh, good morning to elaine fee she says good morning natalie and everybody um camille says good morning she says a bit gray here are you well i'm good thank you and camille can i just say i loved what you did with the lotus earrings that we made did we do them on Friday? Already Camille's been a busy bee. She's bought herself a little mandrel set so she doesn't have to use a marker pen or anything else cylindrical. And she's been dipping them in her fantasy film to make the most beautiful colours. And I think you've just made them look even better. Stroke of genius. So thank you so much for sharing them in our Totally Beads Handmade group. Good morning to Trish. Good morning to Jan. She says the necklaces are very pretty. Thank you very much. Shelley's in as well. She says good morning. All nursing and bad back today, so able to catch you live. I don't know if you can do much beading lying down, but they do say she Shelley with a bad back to kind of keep mobile if you can, which personally when my I've had trouble with my back my back's completely gone out before and <laughs> there's not an awful lot of movement you can do so I'm sending you speedy recovery and hope you're um resting up and taking care of yourself so you're back on the men soon good morning to Sue she says she's been making Christmas wreaths this weekend will continue today and the caged beads look lovely you know you could probably do this with a bauble You'd need a lot more wire, but you could make caged baubles. They'd be lovely. Ooh. <laughs> good morning. Ideas have just struck. Good morning to Linda. She says, good morning, Natalie. Finally managed to catch a live as she's got a day off. Well, I hope, Linda, you have a lovely, lovely day. Good morning to Janet. She says it's overcast in Swansea. Good morning to Barbara, who's in as well. Jan says she loves my earrings. Thank you very much little stars just some rose gold um like paper clip chain and a little star on the bottom of them i did make them but technically i just assembled them because most of them <laughs> it's already done just put them together and thank you very much for that um starting to feel a little bit festive isn't it i had a lovely weekend i went on um saturday I was heading up to uh, the TV studio where I do some tutorials for and we stopped in Stratford-upon-Avon and we got to see the Christmas light switch on which was really really lovely. A scene of the big man himself, Father Christmas, was out and about. I even went in a giant snow globe. Um, it was artificial snow. We had lots of fun in there. My little one, I bent down to, to sprinkle some on him and he had a fist full of it and it went right in my mouth. So I've been finding bits of snow everywhere all weekend. <laughs> but it's been, it's got me in the festive mood anyway. Tina says hello to everyone. It's a gloomy day where she is. Brenda's in as well. She says, good morning from a cold, dark North Carolina. I've been taking apart older jewellery to use 
hope everyone's having a great morning. Do you know what, Brenda? I think that's perfect. This is how I basically started jewellery making. Um, people would ask me, you know, could you fix this? And then I thought, I wonder if anyone's got any old bits and beads and things that they they're not wearing anymore and I will try and revamp it for them and just test out my jewellery making skills I think it's a really good way of kind of reclaiming and recycling some old materials and making them into something new so I hope you're having lots of fun whatever it is you're making Joanne says good morning Natalie and all sun is now shining at after lots of rain this morning in Coventry, um, Camille's blushing because of her compliment, which was rightly given to her gorgeous, gorgeous jewellery she's been making. Good morning to Debbie. Hello to Carol. Good morning to Jackie. Jan says, I managed to get a set of wire shaping mandrels. They're a set of six in different sizes and they're not tapered. Oh, brilliant, Jan. You can do all sorts with them. Um, so we did the lotus earrings with them. We also made the little... Um, flower beaded hoop earrings as well you could you could do rings with them you can do all sorts with them Jan so um they'll be put to good use I'm sure Susan as well good morning to Mina she's good morning Natalie and everyone this one is on my list and looking forward to the tutorial Mina's never ending to do to make list I think good morning to Robin she says good morning Lady Natalie she always calls me Lady Natalie why well, good morning Lady Robin she says that periwinkle colour looks great on you oh this why oh, thank you very much this is a very very old jumper it's got bits of like pink and things kind of woven into it it's really really old I'm surprised it still fits but the joy of a jumper <laughs> just stretch it after the wash um Shelly says thank you I hope so too the necklace looks lovely looking forward to seeing you make it good morning to Lisa hello to Lucy good morning to Anne um, Mina says Natalie did you go to the Christmas market as it's brilliant I've heard I did I didn't do any Christmas shopping though, Mina. I did that usual thing that happens to me when I go to a festive market. I just ate and drank <laughs> poor food. <laughs> so we got a coffee. Uh, we got some lovely like little Dutch pancakes, which were really, really yummy, which we shared. I got a donut. <laughs> just et and I'd already had my tea <laughs> or my dinner whichever you refer it to Jan says look forward to making the lotus earrings good morning to Angela good morning to Pauline and good morning to Shirley as well okay I'm gonna take you hello star who's just come in as well I'm gonna take you over to the website now and you can see your lovely lovely kits for today so as always we are on totallybeads.co.uk this is our fabulous website where you can get all sorts if you wondering what can I get for Christmas people keep maybe asking you what would you like what would you like tell them you want a gift voucher and then you can put it to anything you fancy when the time suits if not head into the video tutorials and you can get your hands on your kits today so there are the lotus gemstone earrings that we've been referring to that we were making the delphine flower earrings as well you can use them with the lovely um, mandrels if you've got some we've got some gorgeous beaded wreaths that have been made recently and today we're doing dawn so i named it dawn because i just thought it was pretty um, and they are caged beads so as i say you can do all sorts with these you can do bracelets you could just do one bead as a focal piece you could make earrings with them um if you've got your findings but today i wanted to do a necklace with them so we've got three colors they are eight pounds and 99 pence for your kit and you get all of the materials that you need to make these necklaces so if you wanted to make numerous bracelets up with them if you've already got um some extra findings you might think i want to make a load of bracelets instead if you've got earwise you might think i want to make a pair of matching earrings with them you will have some left over i'm sure and you can make this as long as you want because there's lots and lots in your kit so they are eight pounds and 99 pence and you can choose from antique gold aqua or dusty pink now i would say you're going to get enough wire in these kits to make about 10 caged beads so you can put all 10 of those caged beads onto your necklace or if you prefer you can just put a couple on you might want to just make a central one you might want to be more sparse with them you might want them to go higher around the neckline you can design these however you want now when i've put these necklaces together 
I've strung them all slightly differently. So the cage beads are in the center, but the placement of my smaller pearl and my crystals do differ between each one because I just wanted to show you the different styles that you could do with it. So I'll head into the gold and you can see what is in your kit. So you're getting to get your copper wire. In this case, it is gold coloured copper wire and it is your 0.8 millimetre wire. You're also going to get your glass pearls. So if I just show you these two here, that's them without being caged. And they are your four and eight millimetre in size. It is the eight millimetre, your larger pearl that I'm going to be showing you how to make the cages around but you can make a cage around any size bead. You just need to adjust the length of your wire. Obviously, if you're going to do the smaller sized um, glass pearl, so the four millimetre, you probably only need half of the length of the wire that I'm going to make the cage with. Um, it might rattle around a little bit otherwise, but we are going to be putting that tiger tail through all the way which is also going to be um i think that is also included in your kit i will double check that for you that you get your tiger tail um you're going to get your crystal rondelles as well which are three by fours so that's what i've put around the neckline on this one just so it sits nice and comfortable i've gone for the small crystals and the small pearls you're going to get your jump ring so you can attach your lovely lobster clasp and your findings with which are your collots and your uh, crimp beads and they will all be in gold um, plated as well so you've got that lovely gold color which is matching your wire i think today i might be a bit cheeky and i might mix my kit so i might show you how to do a cage bead which will work exactly the same each one but i might do one in the rose one in the silver and one in the gold and kind of mix them up a little bit so that is your gold kit eight pounds and 99 pence for you today in your aqua you're getting all of the same but this gorgeous blue color and that's got an be with the silver wire still the 0.8 silver wire and also your silver findings so your um, lobster clasp your clots and your crimp beads and your jump rings will be in a silver color too so you can see i've just placed a little crystal and the same sized eight millimeter pearl in between on this one just to space out and make a little bit of a feature of those lovely caged beads that are really really simple and quite fun to make i think and again i've gone for the smaller pearl and the crystals around the neckline there too so that one is your aqua and that is eight pounds and 99 pence You're going to make up one necklace in your kits today and we've also got the dusty pink which i think is a really really lovely it's kind of like a a very soft pretty i wouldn't say it's a baby pink I'd say it's a bit more of a mature kind of grown-up pink but it's very very pretty i've used the crystals and the pearls in this case just to space out those caged beads and again the neckline i've just popped on the um smaller four millimeter and the crystal rondelles which are three by four millimeter your wire in this kit is going to be a beautiful kind of rose pink color it's all copper wire but it's colored in a color remain so kind of like an anti-tarnish coating of that lovely color and your findings in this kit are going to be rose gold as well so they're going to match and look very very lovely so if you wanted to you could make a little bracelet with this you could just do the cages for your earrings and just pop them through maybe a little um ball pin or head pin whatever you fancy doing um i just want to show you how to use this technique because it's very straightforward and i think very very pretty um, i'm hoping today my camera plays along it took me ages this morning to get it going i've had to um kind of restart oh dear i've got a blank screen there we go uh to restart my computer and it was configurating settings for about an hour and then my camera still wouldn't work so <laughs> and you just put what a rebel this is because i'm mixing up my kits i know but they're all so lovely i just think it's nice to see so whichever one you choose you know what it's gonna look like um let me just say hello to anybody that i may have missed um i said hello to lisa i said hello to mina and jan and i don't know if i did say hello to pauline hello to pauline um i said hello to Sha uh, star um 
Camille says the joys of shopping is eating out. I know, but didn't buy anything. Didn't buy anything for anyone <laughs> other than me. <laughs> um, Mina says they're, they all look gorgeous. Lucy shared the link for you today. So if you click on this link, either if you're watching via YouTube or Facebook, it should take you straight through to the cage bead necklaces that we're doing today. Lucy says these look nice. Thank you very much. Good morning to Monica. She says hello, everybody. Um, I've got the lovely Denise in. She says, good morning, Natalie. All the beaders too. Um, looks amazing today. Uh, Lucy says, oh, looks like the Facebook feed has disappeared again. I've got no idea why it's doing it. Got lots of you watching. So I'm hoping that you've all come to find me on YouTube, if that's the case. Star says, a very pretty make today. And Elizabeth Sin, who says that Facebook's kicked her out again. I do apologise. Um, I'll repeat this step by step. So if some of you have disappeared and are still trying to find me, don't worry, you won't miss anything. So I'm going to take you down on the mat. I know, Elaine, I don't know what's up with it. It's very temperamental and it's not an issue on my end, I don't think. I don't know what's going on. So here are our lovely necklaces. This is your very pretty pink. In fact, I'm going to hold that up so you can see that nice and closely. We've got the lovely aqua, which is on your silver. Love that colour. And we've got the very, very pretty gold, which I think is perfect for Christmas and the new year. But you could, if you wanted to get multiple kits, mix them up. You could do a multi-layered one, which would look something like this, depending on how you place them. Or you could mix them and add different ones onto the same strand. So you're going to get three colours. Let me just place them down there. You're going to get three colours to choose from in your kits. So we've got the larger pearls here. You're also going to get your smaller pearls and your gorgeous crystals. So, for example, if I've got the gold kit, I'm going to get two sizes of my glass pearl and these beautiful crystal rondelles to go with them. That is going to be more than enough for a lovely long necklace. For the pretty in pink... You've got this gorgeous soft pink colour here. And then for the aqua, we've got these lovely, lovely pearls. So your pearls are the same colour. They match exactly the same. They're just different sizes. But I've popped these crystals in with them. So just thought they were very, very sparkly and just added a little bit of a kind of snow kind of theme, I think. OK, so I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to take my wire, whichever colour. I'll go for the rose to begin with. And I'm going to take my wire and I am just going to straighten it out a little bit. So there's not any major kinks in it. And I'm going to cut about 20 centimetres on my ruler, which in inches works out to be about eight inches. So I'm going to cut eight inches or 20 centimetres of my wire. So I've got my length just there. And I'm going to take my round nose pliers. For this, I would say in terms of tools, a ruler or something to measure your wire with, um, I would say wire straighteners if you've got them, but you can just run that through your fingers or through a cloth to straighten. It's nice and soft. Round nose pliers are a definite must. Wire cutters, so your flush cutters just to trim your wire from the reel. And a pair of chain nose or maybe flat nose pliers can be very useful too. Um, I would say a lot of this is done with your fingers. Mina's found me. Thank goodness for that. Uh, Tracy says, good morning, everyone. A bit late today. She's not missed the demo, so she's a happy bunny. OK, so I've got my 20 centimetres of wire and I'm going to take one end. Let me just move that ruler out of the way. And I'm just going to go right up to the very end of that wire. And I'm going to start to use the small part of my uh, tapered end of my round nose pliers so they get the kind of 
wider with the handle, smaller at the base. And I'm just going to curl a little spiral like so. I'm then going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to continue that spiral. So I'm holding over that little curl with my pliers and I'm just giving it little turns by little flicks of my wrist just to get that spiral to start going round and round. Now, once I've created, I would say about maybe three coils, if it's easier, push this part of your wire towards the spiral. So you don't have to really use that, you can just use this part. Don't worry as well if your spiral isn't hugely, like neatly close together, because we're gonna be separating this out anyway. So don't worry if it's not perfectly tight, but we don't want those wires crossing over each other, just going round and round and round. When I've got about three or four kind of circles on my spiral, I can hold it with my thumb and my finger and I can just start pinching it together just to move that slowly down the wire so my spiral's getting bigger. And I'm going to stop when I get about halfway. So if I've started with 20 centimetres, I'm going to curl that until I get to 10 centimetres left, if this makes sense. If you've gone a little bit larger with your wire, so for example, if you've done a 24 centimetre length, then you want to go halfway down to 12. If you're doing it in inches, and what did we say, we had eight inches, then you'd want about four inches of your wire left. So I've started with 20 centimetres, and halfway is giving me 10 centimetres left. Um, Joanne said, um, I remember doing cages a while back, but I can't remember what the full design was, but she's looking forward to today. Once I've got my curl on one side, I'm going to make a curl on the other side, going in the other direction. Now, if you curl this in the same direction, don't worry, you can just twist it so they're opposite. So I'm going to flip it round. I'm going to go right to the end of my wire again with my um, brown nose pliers. And I'm going to do exactly the same. Curl that in. So I have my first little curl take my flat nose or chain nose pliers and cover that over. So I'm just pinching that little loop in between the pliers and I can start that little spiral. And when I've got maybe about three curls, I can then pinch it between my thumb and my finger and I'm gonna move that spiral so it's gradually getting larger and larger and it's going to go all the way down till it meets that other spiral at the end. So I've got like a little S kind of curly shape like so. Good morning, Phoenix Creations. Just good morning all. Hi, lovely Nat. Yep, I'm late again. Meg slept in and so did she. Well, how lucky are you? I'd have loved a lie in this morning, but someone had tennis, so I had to get up earlier. Uh, Lucy says, I'm going to give this a go. I remember we did something with cages before. I think we, ha I haven't, um, well, I have, but not with totally beads. It's been a, mm, if we have done it before, it will have been a while ago. So hopefully my method might be a little bit different, but it might refresh some of you. And if you've not done it before, then I'd give it a go. I um, mean, if you have done it before, then give it a go again. Right, now I've got these lovely little circular spirals going in the opposite direction. As I say, if you have curled them in and they're going in the same, you can just kind of flip that round. I'm now going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to position it inside one of those spirals. And just with my fingers, I'm going to push down. Now, what's wonderful about my round nose pliers is I've said that they're tapered. So as I gently push that cage down, it's going to open up those spirals a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything too much. And if you feel like, oh, I've opened that a little bit too wide, you can just give it a little push back together with your fingers. We just want to open that up a little bit. And I find that maybe making my cages first is um, something that's probably preferable. And then you just get the fun of kind of stringing it on together. 
I'm now going to take my pearl. So because I've used the rose gold wire, I'm going to use this lovely eight millimeter, pretty dust dusky pink pearl. Good morning, Josie. How are you doing? And I'm going to position my pearl inside. Now, what can happen is your pearl can move a little bit. And what I want eventually, <laughs> Tracy says, they look like Madonna's top. They do a little bit. Yeah. Little bit of 80s Madonna for you there. <laughs> if you want to make sure that your um, bead hole the drill hole through the bead is kind of facing up. You can, if you've got one to hand, maybe use a little pin or a little bit of tiger tail, but you can move this drill hole afterwards, so don't worry. But what, um, what you could do is you could position your bead already onto a little bit of wire, stringy material or a pin, just to keep it in position. So I'm going to try and position my drill hole facing up. But as I say, it doesn't really matter. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit it inside one of my lovely little loops. So you can see, because I've used 20 centimetres um, or 8 inches and I've created that spiral, that's a really lovely width for this bead. Now, if it is a little bit smaller, then you can just open out those coils a little bit more. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip this side. So I'm going to put a little bend in it. You can do that with your tools, but I do find just doing it with your fingers just to close it over. Again, don't worry about that bead hole moving. When I close it over, it's going to trap that bead inside. And now what I'm going to do is just reposition those coils. If it's opened up a little bit, you can give it a little bit of a twist. And I'm just going to position it in and around with my fingers just to catch that bead. If you want to, you can use your um, tools, your pliers, and you can kind of close that over more or open them out more. And then I've got my pretty bead like so. When it comes to stringing on, I'm going to want to find that little drill hole. And I'm just going to kind of move it a little bit with my pin or with my tiger tail. So now I've got that centre where I need to. And my bead is just going to fit on really, really nicely. And they're ready to string. So as I say, you could put that as it is as a little earring. <clears throat> Excuse me. You could pop it in the centre and have it in the middle of a bracelet or you can make a few of them like we're going to do today and make a lovely necklace with it. So what sometimes I do is I just take a little bit of tiger tail. And if I need to manoeuvre that bead again, I'll just find where that hole is. Reposition. Do find sometimes it's easier to do it with maybe a little bit of wire, just gently. And then I can just pop that to the side until I'm ready to string them all together and ready to go. So I'm going to continue to do that. I'll probably make some cage beads first and then I will string them together. So as I've done a pretty pink one, let's let's do some other lovely colours. I'll do the silver and I'll do the gold as well. Um, Trish says I was just thinking the same thing. So you're all getting Madonna vibes from this, are you? Um, you can, as I say, you can buy caged cages to pop like crystals in so you can kind of change over whatever gemstones that you want to use or you can pop your beads inside of there but I think rather than buy them you know we're, we're jewelry makers aren't we we're, we're crafty that's the joy of it you might as well just use a little bit of wire and you can make your own um, so I'm just going to get some of my eight millimeter larger pearls off the strand to begin with going to go with the silver this time so still um a 0.8 millimeter wire i'm just going to straighten it out a little bit to begin with so just running that through my pliers i'm going to take my ruler and i'm going to cut 20 centimeters And I think what I might do is I might show you what to do if you curl it in the same direction, just so you know, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to start at the end of my wire 
turning it with my round nose until I've made one full little circle. This doesn't have to be perfectly neat. It can be a nice quick make or you can do these while you're sitting in front of the telly or if you're making along with me or whatever. Just make, I would say, probably do your coils and your cages first. And then you've just got the fun of piecing your jewellery together. Once I've done a few spirals, I can just pinch it with my fingers and just get that spiral slightly larger each time I start to coil it, having those spirals nice and flat. And it's, it's nice to shape it with your fingers because you get that lovely kind of shape to it. I'm going to wait until I've got about halfway, so 10 centimetres left. And I'm going to curl it in the opposite direction. In this instance, I'm not. I'm going to curl it in the same direction, just so you don't think, oh no, I've done it wrong, and then you've wasted it. You really haven't. So if I start to go in the same direction like I'm doing here, making my curl, just starting it off with my tools, and then start to carry that on between my finger and my thumb. If I get to this stage and think, oh no, I'm going in the same way rather than the opposite way, so I haven't got my S, all I'm gonna do is just give it a little twist. So it's definitely still sal sal salvageable. And then I'm just gonna continue to curl that. So I've got my kind of curly S shape, like so. I'm then going to pick up my 8mm bead. And again, don't worry if these aren't really tightly coiled because I'm going to separate them out. Before I pick up my bead, I'm just going to push it gently against the round nose pliers just to open up those coils a little bit. So I'm making like a little spring, picking up my bead, placing it in so it sits nicely inside and giving it a little bend. Now, if you struggle to bend it, which you really shouldn't probably have any issues with, you can get a pair of tools and just give it a little flick like so, so you can then just in case that around. So I'm just bending it. You'll see I've got a little bit of the wire which is bent there slightly out of place, just where I've twisted it in the right direction. But that's easily fixable. Just gonna give it a little press with my fingers. And if you are very particular with it, you can always take your tools and give that a little push into place as well. So all I want to do then is just make sure that those coils are nice around the bead. And you know, if you do use a little bit less wire, then you'll just have more of that bead exposed. Um, so just go by eye on what you think looks nicest but 20 centimetres or eight inches should be more than enough. Again, my bead hole has slightly fallen to the side. All I'm gonna do is just maneuver that back into place by kind of gently just moving that pearl between the wire so we get it back into the center. And then that is ready for stringing. So if it moves again, just little strokes. You won't take the colour off your pearl, so don't worry too much. You're just going to get that back into place. And then that is ready for stringing. Pammy K is asking how much wire. In your kit, you're gonna get enough to probably make about 10 cage beads, and I'm using 20 centimeters or eight inches 
of the wire for each bead. It is 0.8 millimeter wire. So again, I'm gonna take my wire, I'm gonna straighten it just to get any kinks out that may have been on the reel. I'm gonna line it up against my ruler. I'm cutting 20 centimeters, which I will double check, which is eight inches. And then I'm going to start to make my next caged bead. Um, Trish says, is it a similar ratio for other sizes, such as six inches of wire for a six millimetre bead? I would say probably so, yeah, Trish. You just want to make sure that the circumference of that circle is roughly the same size as the bead. So if we start to make this little coil here, And I'm traveling that along until we get 10 centimeters or four inches left to go in the other direction. Just keep measuring it up against your ruler. Doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. But say that is about 10 inches. If I measure that, I've got about a centimetre there, so about 10 millimetres. So it's just slightly larger than the bead itself. So the bead is going to sit in to the centre. So if you are going to play around with different sizes of cage in those beads, what you can always do is just when you start making your spiral, just position on your bead onto that spiral and just check, will that go round the bead? I'm sure as long as it's maybe two millimeters slightly larger than your bead or just slightly larger to, to the bead then it will go round with no problem and as i say if you do it with less your coils will just be opened out a little bit more they won't be as close together so back in the other direction and then i'm going to do with the gold and then i think we can just start piecing this together so just making that little curl. If I'm still to continue to curl with the brown nose pliers, what's going to happen is you can see how that wire starts to move back behind rather than around that first curl. So that's why I then transfer to my chain nose or flat nose pliers just to start flattening out that coil so the spiral is going around the last coil of wire. And then when I've got a few I'm going to have enough to be able to just pinch it between my finger and my thumb and continue to move along down that wire. So I've got my little S shape, round nose pliers in again. Now I'm pushing those circles in the same direction. What I mean by that is Although my circles go one way and then the other, my spirals, when I push them out, I'm pushing them out in the same direction. So they're both going to be going up. I'm not pushing one down <clears throat> and one up, just both pushing them in the same direction. And you can open that out more or less with your fingers just by having a little bit of tension. You can see mine are quite um, closely coiled together. There's not a, a you know huge space in between them my beads now going to fit nicely inside and then i'm just going to bend it over and then reposition it so when i first put it in it's a little bit wibbly wobbly so i tend to just give it a little push so the top of those points i then kind of flatten down and then i can move that wire around give it a little twist if it needs to just to kind of close it over and once that's strung onto your bracelet or your necklace that's not coming off it's going to be held in place you can see here that my bead hole is right in the middle so i'm just going to gently with a little eye pin a little bit of the wire that i've been using or with the tiger tail itself, just manoeuvre it a little bit 
to get it into place so it's in the center of that coil. Ready for stringing. And then that tiger tail will go through one end and out through the other. Uh, I'll do some gold and then we'll get piecing it all together. So this is your gorgeous gold wire, colour remain wire, so it is anti-tarnish. Straightening that through my fingers or my um, pliers, I'm going to cut my 20 centimetres. So I think you probably got enough wire to make about um, 10 caged beads. You might have a little bit more, I suppose it depends on your cages. So I'm cutting that to 20 centimetres, pop that out of the way. And I'm going to be using this with my gorgeous gold pearls this time. Taking my round nose pliers, give it a little bit of a curl. So I've made that full circle. Pinching that around. So I've made a couple of coils. You can continue to do this if you want with your pliers. You don't have to use your fingers. If you want to use your tools all the way through, you can do that as well. That coil will get larger, but as long as you're um, positioning gently with your pliers to cover that surface area, you can see there that I've done that all with my tools, not my fingers, you can do that as well. So whatever you're comfortable with. And then back in the opposite direction, going round and round. So it's a nice kind of repetitive um, little make really. And so I say I always kind of just make my cages first. I'm just going to reposition that wire. There you go. Just because it wasn't sitting inside that loop, it was sitting underneath it. So I'm just going to go round and round. But it's a nice um, repetitive make, something that, you know, you can sit and, and batch make cages, essentially. I feel it's easier to get about three spirals with your tools before you start using your fingers just to give you enough to kind of pinch. And I think using your tools usually makes that coil a little bit tighter. Um, all you can see here is all I'm doing is just flicking my wrist, giving it a little pinch as I go. Jan says, you make it look so easy. Oh, thank you. She says, you're so clever, Natalie. I'm really not. It's very, very, very straightforward to do. I am not the first one to do this. And hopefully I won't be the last because you'll all give it a go as well. Back into the centre with my round nose pliers, gently opening out those spirals. Uh, Shelley says, the colour of the beads looks nice against the wires. It's nice to have a different look. You know, you've got these really pretty glass pearls. They're lovely and they come in so many lovely, lovely colours. The wire, I think, just kind of, accentuates that just decorate that bead a little bit um phoenix says question how to how do you manage not to take the coating off when using the tools on the coil it is a color remain so it is quite durable if you want you could do it with a nylon coated tip plier instead um it's only really to start it off before i end up using my fingers usually anyway um, but I've not had any trouble at all, um, and I would be honest with you, I've had no trouble with the coating coming off this wire. The only time I ever really do have an issue with the colour coming off the wire is if I'm using a very thin wire like um, a 0.4 and I'm pulling it back through the beads a few times. That if I've put it through once and then brought it back through the bead again, although the, the drill hole in the glass pails particularly are quite a nice size, um, obviously that hole is getting smaller and smaller with the more wire that's going through it. So that then sometimes can scrape off the coating 
with this i don't find it ever an issue to be honest with you phoenix um creations i'm just gonna get my pearl into position so i can see the hole with my between the gap of the wire and i'm just gently kind of just knocking the surface area of that pearl very gently till the hole is in place and then as soon as i pick up the tiger tail i end up moving it again but you can find it's it's really not difficult to do and these are what i've got so far and i'm going to do one more and then i can start piecing these together uh, phoenix creation says durable that is until i try um she's got she tr struggles with a grip control isn't uh, her finesse she says my brain won't translate right what i'll do is i'll show you it with your nylon coated pliers so all i'm doing is i'm turning that loop i want to make sure that loop is sitting inside and then i'm going to start in fact i said i'm going to start with the nylon coated so this works exactly the same so your nylon coated pliers are lovely lovely things to use for lots of different things mine are absolutely i'd say they're falling apart they're not i just need to put my new tips on because they're cracked and they're missing a screw and i really probably should make the effort to change them because it will take me all of two minutes but I'm just sticking with what I've got. So all this is going to do is it's going to protect my um, wire from my tools. Because obviously if you put metal on metal, you can make Mars in it and you can mark it. And usually if you're using, say, a silver sterling or a bit of copper, you can buff that out really, really easy with like a little Dremel tool or whatever. But if you've got a lovely coated wire like this with a beautiful colour on it, then buffing is not going to help. It's just going to take the coating off that wire and you'll be left with your very beautiful copper coloured wire underneath it. Um, so if you are um, someone who is concerned that you will mark it, then use your nylon coated pliers instead because they will do exactly the same job. All I want to do is just have enough to grip on it you might find these are easier to use because there's a wider surface area on that tool so you get more of a grip of your spiral once i've got the first few coils anyway quite like to just do it with my fingers moving it all the way up joanne says phoenix creations i have the same issues i didn't realize there was a name for it you're gonna make me say this name um <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. What was it called? Uh, dysgraphia. Okay. I don't think that was as hard as I thought it was going to be to say. I didn't know there was a name for it either. Um, to remind me of something which is coordination. What's that called? Dis oh. oh, you're making me think things now. <laughs> and my brain doesn't compute what is that called that's gonna annoy me um phoenix says i've been trying bead buddy tool magic a silicone tool dip yeah if you um if you want to coat any tool you can use like a little bit of tape like a masking tape on it that's just going to cover your metal still let your tool do exactly what it needs to but it stops the metal touching the metal you can also get like a putty dip so it comes in a little pot and you stick your tools into that little pot of putty and as you pull it out it creates like a kind of plasticky coating leave it to dry and then your tools will be good to go you will need to recoat them after a little while but your putty will last you so you can use that as well so there's there's lots of um different means to kind of i just find i think sometimes the more you do the the less you i mean i still make pendants and things and i'll still put the occasional tool mark in it um i tend to polish and buff mine anyway depending on what it is i'm doing so i'm just giving it a little pinch pinching that coil flat around that bead 
and if there's a little bit of a bump like this in it I can give it a little twist so I'm twisting one in one direction and one in the other just to close that up I do actually just want to curl that in a little bit so it sits inside I don't want that little bit of spiral sticking up so again I'm just going to push my tools on top just to flatten that down and then I need to find where that little hole is and give it a little reposition so my drill hole is at the top there it is and then I can slide that on to my tiger tail so now I've got my pretty beads that I think would look like a lovely little bracelet but I do like to pop a bead or a crystal in between just to kind of space it out a little bit and that is the joy of having these kits because you're getting loads you're getting two sizes of your pearls your four and your eight millimeter and you're getting your crystals as well so I'm going to cut a length of my tiger tail if I'm making a necklace I'm going to cut it to the length that I want a little bit over just so I've got something to hold on to when I attach my findings or you could make it into a bracelet uh, time wise I'm wondering whether I should do a bracelet we'll see how we go okay so have a little think on how you want to design it what I would tend to do is once I've made my cages I would start to string on from the middle and then work out and why I'm doing that is because I don't know what design I'm going to do until I'm starting to put it together if you know exactly how you want to make it so if you're making a few of these and you think I want them exactly the same then you can put your collot and your finding on and then you can bead all the way around and just add them on in the order that you want to go but if you're not too sure how you want to play about with your design then start off in the middle because you can just slide them off if you need to I'm going to pop a bead stopper on one end just so it doesn't get lost and I'm going to start with my lovely pink one so I did string them onto the tiger tail I pulled it out it doesn't matter I'm going to get my tiger tail and I'm going to place my central bead right into the middle here and then I'm going to play about with all my lovely pearls and my lovely crystals so I think you can you can separate them out with whatever you want I'm going to pop the smaller um, pearl onto either side I'll take that bead stopper off for now because I'm going to work on both sides at the same side at the same time and that's going to ensure that my make is symmetrical so whatever I put onto one side of the tag tail I'm going to put onto the other I think I'm then going to go with a lovely little crystal do I do the pink crystals hmm, maybe I go for, yeah I'll go for these ones I'm just playing about here um I think Chris Joanne is having a little chat with Phoenix. Um, oh, that's very kind. Phoenix says, Joanne, Google it. There are questions you can answer, like being so holding a pencil and getting words from brain to paper. I didn't know I was... Oh, do you know what? Maybe I've got this then too, because sometimes I used to find, that, especially if I used to have an exam when I was younger and I was writing for a long time, oh, my hand would, would hurt. doesn't seem to be an issue anymore because everything you, you you write is typed really now isn't it it's like done by computer or text or something <laughs> then I'm going to add my crystals on and then I'm going to add my next cage bead so I think I'm going to go for my pretty do I go for blue or gold I oh, will go for the blue so I'm going to add my cage beads on so I'm just sliding that through the tiger tail into position I do think I'm probably only gonna have time to do the bracelet today which will work exactly the same as the necklace only you just get to play around um, with more lovely beads and make them even longer I think I'm gonna put another sparkly crystal either side and another pretty pearl so I'm going for the aqua now And 
and then I'm going to add a couple more crystals and I'm going to go with those gorgeous gold colour. Uh, Phoenix Creations saying, I love how you combine the wire and the colours to match. And <laughs> Phoenix is asking, can we get attention so we can stay longer? <laughs> stay behind after class. You sound like Camille. Camille always used to... Um, she was the naughty one in class, where you, Camille? You're always the chatterbox. <laughs> I'm just playing about with design. Now, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just adding on those lovely, lovely crystals. So you're going to get loads in your kit that you can um, space out between. Just slide in that tiger tail on so it's going through those holes. I think I'll add... Hmm, feeling like I wanted an extra crystal either side of there. But if that's the case, if you put them together and you think, actually, I want to add more of that or less of this, you can just slide them off again. Um, and that's why I really like a project like this, because you can you can play about with, with what it is that, you know, you want to do. I'll add those lovely four millimetre gold ones on now. Just cut them off my string. So you've probably got enough to make at least 10 caged beads um, of this size, maybe a little bit more. I would probably work with an odd number um, if you're, say, doing your necklace or your bracelet. So if you're doing, I mean, you might just want to put one on as the centre. You might want to do like this and you might want to keep alternating all the way through um, with your caged beads. But I would tend to use an odd number so you've got kind of a focal central point, if that makes sense. I think seems as I've got them, I'm probably going to add the pink ones on as well. So I'm going to go back. So I'm keeping the same coloured crystals in this at the moment. Obviously, you're only going to get, if you get one of the kits, you're going to get the two sizes in your pearl and then a strand of your crystals as well. Um, I've been a little bit naughty today and I've mixed my kits. Just going to manoeuvre that. There you go. So I've got my bead on my tiger tail. So sliding it up through the hole and it will come out the other side. I'm just going to reposition this because you can see it's not quite central. So it's not coming out that central hole. There, there you go. Oh, Jan says, I think I'm going to try this and make a pair of earrings. Maybe that's what I should have done. Maybe I should have kept those two as my earrings mm. well i've got plenty to keep making um so now all i'm going to do is i think that would probably be enough for my my center feature i'm then going to continue to add my crystals and my pearls on and i'm going to make that very i really quite like that mixed color combination if you do want to multi-buy your kits, then you'll be able to play along with this. I think they look really lovely together. Um, so I'm just going to string on my pearls and my crystals now. What I will do is I will put whatever onto one side is going onto the other side. So I'm doing them at the same time. And that just means it's symmetrical. If I'm just adding beads and crystals, then as long as you've got the same amount, it will be fairly easy to do one side and then the next but if you're mixing up like i am today um mean the same plus white pearls and silver or gold wire yes white pearls would look beautiful with with any of the wires to be honest white pearls go with everything um but if you're doing what i'm doing and you have got multiple kits and you are mixing them up a little bit with your pearls, then I do find it's a little bit more straightforward. So just add one onto one end and one onto the other as you go. Um, and then you know you've got an even match. So when I've strung that on and I've got the size that I want, I'm then just going to add on the findings. Now I'm not going to keep you 
I'm not going to overrun for you today because I know you've probably got places to be, people to see, things to make. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to attach your findings and then I will take you back over to the website. So I'm going to make that for the length that I want to. Would that be? That would actually be a really pretty bracelet. What length is that for me to do it as a bracelet? Let's see. That'll be about seven inches. Okay. So what I would do is once I've strung that on, should I make it into a bracelet? I should keep it and then I'll do it as a necklace later. I think I want that as a necklace. It would be a pretty little bracelet though, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just I'm just designing on the spot. Okay, so if I was making it into a whatever, I'm gonna pop my bead stopper on this. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna bead, 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 bead all the way to where I've got it where I want to and I'm going to add my findings on so I'm going to take a clot which will be included in my kit and my crimp beads and I'm going to double crimp just to make sure that it's nice and strong these aren't too heavy because you've got your glass pearls but because you've got the wire on them they might be slightly heavier so you want to make sure it's nice and sturdy I'm going to pop my clot onto the end and then I'm going to take my crimp bead I'm going to put two crimp beads on, got fluff there off my desk, do apologise, and I'm going to slide up my first crimp bead right to the end of my tiger tail. So I'm going to take my pliers, I'm going to slide it up to the end, and then I'm going to very gently give it a little crush just to flatten that down, then I'm going to pop the next crimp bead right up so it's sitting next to it. And with my pliers, do exactly the same, just crushing it so they're sitting nice and flat. And then when I bring my clot up, I can close that over. So my two crimp beads are now inside of that little rounded dome part. I'm going to push it gently together with my pliers just to close that over. So my little kind of eyelet parts are lined up together. I'm gonna then do exactly the same on the other side. So I'm gonna take my collot and my crimp beads. I'm gonna slide my collot on first so those little eyelets are facing away from my beads those little holes i'm going to slide on my first crimp bead and then i'm going to come in with a pair of my pliers and i'm just going to squish that crimp bead down so if you want shape it first get the shape of your bracelet or your necklace that nice rounded shape and i'm just going to squish that cloth down right inside sorry that crimp bead right inside that collot so i've got a nice tension there's no major gaps between my beads and my findings and what that will do is that will hold it all in place so i'm going to take you can see that i've got my crimp bead i'm just holding it with my pliers giving it a little crush down so that's nice and flat i can now take my cutters I'm going to trim off that tiger tail just above that crimp bead and then I'm going to fold it over with my fingers first then take my pliers little bit of pressure just to push that down and then I'm going to be able to add on my jump rings and my lovely lobster clasp which i did have just there it is so to open up the jump rings i'm going to take two pairs of my pliers and i'm just going to give it a little twist towards me or away from me just to open it up only a little bit there you go 
then I can slide that through the holes in my clot and then back in the opposite direction just to close that up and then on the other side I'm going to give it a little twist to open the next one sliding it through the holes in the clot and then add on my clasp as well and then I can close that back over and if it was long it'd be my lovely necklace as it's short it's now my lovely lovely bracelet so lots of things you can do with that gorgeous cage bead design um, I really think they look like sweeties having those colours together um, I'll quickly take you back over to the website um, so you can see what your kits are these are the Dawn caged bead necklaces they are £8.99 you can get it in antique gold, aqua or dusty pink and you can see here on the pictures if you were to continue to bead um, how they would look as a lovely finished necklace. So £8.99 today for a lovely, lovely necklace. Um, if you want to get more than one kit or you want to get all three, then you can do a multi-mixed one. You're going to have plenty probably to make bracelets and earrings up if you would like a full suite of jewellery. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you give it a go. If at all you've got any questions if you come to watch this and um, maybe in the future and think i don't know what i'm doing i don't know how this works then just drop me a comment you can comment in youtube which is i'm assuming where we're still streaming live from and i will always do my best to watch back and answer any questions you can always find me in the totally beads um handmade group on facebook you can find me on facebook as Natalie Patton Wire Artist, it's spelled there how my name is, and I share all the tutorials. I've also got a playlist on YouTube, so you can catch them there. Um, and I am Rock Scissors Paper, if you ever want to catch um, me on there, that's all my kind of wire work projects. So lots of ways to find us. Um, also, the Totally Beads Warehouse are also very, very helpful. So if you've got any questions about the products that we're using in any of the kits, um, then do by all means send them a little message, a little email, and they'll get back to you really, really soon. Um, thank you for being with me today. What am I doing on Friday? That is the question. Oh, I think I've got, I'm doing I think, some more wire work with you. I'm going to be doing some really pretty earrings. Uh, I've got some crystal drops and a lovely little bit of wire work. They're going to be really, really pretty, I'd like to think, and ready for Christmas. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm doing. So if you want to come and join me then, it'll be lovely to see you then. Um, Brenda says, thank you for this beautiful bracelet or necklace. Hope everyone has a wonderful day. Star says a lovely make. Thank you. You're most welcome. She's wishing everyone a great day as well. Jan says, thank you, Natalie, for another beautiful making tutorial. Joanne says they look like a string of sweets. I think so too. They really look I love them colours together. Shelly says it looks great. Jan says, have a good day and a week, and she's gonna see me Friday. Beautiful and thank you, says Mina. You're most welcome. Um and Tracy saying thank you. Joe says wishing everybody a lovely day, as is Trish and Rachel and Lisa and Shelley and Joanne. So you're all being really lovely. I hope everyone has a fantastic week. And um, whatever I'm doing Friday, I hope you can come and join me. So take care, everybody, and I'll see you soon.